What's up YouTube, Jeremiah Hersey here, and today in this episode we're going to talk about model-driven applications. Now this is going to be a little bit longer of a video that I normally do, so I'm going to break it up into two parts. The first part today, we're going to talk about what a model-driven app is, how to set it up. In the second part, we're actually going to create a model-driven application. Now for this video, we are going to be using some of the standard tables and columns that are already inside of Dataverse, which is Microsoft's online database. And this is the only type of source you can use with a model-driven applications. With Canvas apps, you have access to a lot of different data sources, but for model-driven applications, it's specific to Dataverse only. And so we're gonna start off, we're gonna go to make.powerapps.com and go ahead and get started. So here we are at make.powerapps.com. Once again, as always, we wanna make sure that we're in the correct environment. So in the upper right-hand corner, make sure you're in the correct environment for building your applications. So let's talk about model-driven applications. So with model-driven applications, they're designed a little bit differently than Canvas apps because we have to build the tables that we're gonna use first inside of Dataverse. Now there are a lot of standard tables that are created by Microsoft and this is just tables that Microsoft has deemed common tables for business purposes. And so if you look over on the left hand side, you're going to see this option for tables and that's where we're going to get started here today. So the application that we're going to build is just a basic model driven application for data entry to schedule appointments for our company. Now, when we're deciding which tables to use, there are a lot of standard tables created by Microsoft and a lot of columns that are already there for us to use. And so you'll see some of the common ones here. The first one is the account table. We also have a contact table. Now the difference between the two is if you're dealing with companies and scheduling appointments for companies, then you would use the account table. If you're dealing with individual clients or contacts, you would use the contact table. You can also see that we also have an appointment table that's already created as well. And so these are standard from Microsoft. We don't have to create them, but we are going to link them together in a way that we can look up to a different table. So the two that we're gonna be using here today are the appointment and the contact table. So let's go take a look at what's inside of those. So if we click on the appointment table, we're gonna see that there are some columns that are already created for us down here at the bottom. And what you need to know about model-driven applications is that you need to do two things in order for these to work. Now, if they are standard tables created by Microsoft, they're already gonna have forms and views created for you. So if you look in the data experience section here at the top, you're gonna to see forms and views. The difference between the two is that forms are used for data entry and data editing. So whatever we're gonna be putting into our application, we have to design a form to enter data and also edit data as well. Then we have our views. The view is what we're gonna be looking at inside of our app. The different, you can create different views to see different data for specific users if you want to. You can also put row level security on here as well so only certain people can see certain views. We're gonna keep it very simple here today just so you get an understanding of what a model driven application is and how to use it. So the biggest thing is that model driven applications are designed for data entry. That's their purpose. They're not gonna be very pretty like a Canvas app they're going to be very data focused. And so we're gonna be putting in data into these just to monitor our appointments here as we have our contacts. So the first thing that we're gonna do in our appointment table is we're gonna select the form, okay? So you're gonna notice that there are a lot of forms already created. Once again, these are created by Microsoft. Any table that you use that's created by them in Dataverse already is gonna have forms and views available for you to use. So what I'm gonna be focusing on here today 
is this main form. So we have several different form types. We have a main form, we also have a card, and we have a quick create here as well. So if we're inside of another table, we can also quickly create an appointment using this quick create. But what we're gonna be focusing on here today is the appointment form and this is the main form so whatever the name of your table is will have a main form associated to it so i'm going to go ahead and click appointment now it also might say information as well so as we click into the main form we're going to go ahead and if it isn't already named appointment over on the right hand side you're going to see the display name you can go ahead and change that to your appointment form now once again, appointments are designed for data entry, that's their purpose. And so as we look here at our main form, we can see that we have several columns available. So these are the columns with inside of our appointment table. On the left hand side, you're going to see this ABC. This is a list of all of the columns that you have available inside of your form and so you can add these additional columns if you want to by simply dragging and dropping them into the section that you want you can also create new sections as well so if you look up here at the top under the component section you have the ability to create additional sections with inside of here so if i say all right i want a one column section i'll just go ahead and create that so you can see what that looks like. So I'm going to just drag and drop that into the position that I want. And you can see that we now have a new section. So on the right hand side, I'm going to go ahead and rename this under the label. And so I'm going to label this as the contact lookup. So what we're going to do is we're going to look up to the contact table, but in order to do that, we have to create the column first. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just create the section that's going to house the column that we're going to use. You can also see under the subject section that this has a star right here. This means that this particular column is business required. So you can't skip this. You're going to have to enter this information at minimum when you're creating a new appointment. So for right now, we're just gonna click save and publish in the upper right hand corner. You always wanna make sure you save your changes. So we'll click save and publish. And after that saves, we're going to click the back button, but you wanna make sure that you're clicking the back button with inside of the Power App screen. So not the browser back button, but the back button here inside of the Power App screen. We're gonna use our breadcrumbs here. So notice we have tables, appointments, and forms. I'm gonna just navigate back to the appointment table. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to add a column. Notice that there are 58 more columns here that we can choose from that are already created by Microsoft. So if you click the drop down arrow, you can see a lot of these predefined columns that we could use if we wanted to. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new column that is going to be a lookup column to our contact table. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the plus icon here to create a new column with inside of my appointment table. So I'm gonna call this my contact lookup. And this is gonna to be to look up the contact associated with the appointment. Now, what we need to do is we need to choose a data type. So if I click on data type, you're gonna see that we have the option for a lot of different data types. And the one that we're gonna be focused on here today is a lookup. And so we're gonna choose that lookup here. Now, a customer here could be a contact or an account, but for this instance, we're simply just gonna use a basic lookup to another table. And so I'm gonna choose the lookup option. Then it's gonna ask at the bottom here, what is the related table? 
what table are we going to look up to? And so in this case, we're gonna choose our contact table. So I'm gonna click the drop down here and I'm going to scroll down until we find our contact table. Here it is right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and select that table. Now remember I said that we have the option to choose whether this is required or optional. And so you can see there's business recommended, business required, and optional. Well, I wanna make sure that this column has to be filled out. I don't wanna give them the option whether they want to or not. I wanna make sure that every appointment is associated to a specific contact for my company. And so I'm gonna be choosing here business required, so they have to fill it out. And that's all we have to do here, and we're gonna go ahead and click save. So we now have this contact column lookup inside of our appointment table. Now before we can use this though, we wanna make sure that we add this to both the form and the view so that we can see what that value is. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here, we're gonna start with our form. So forms allow you to enter and edit data. So I'm gonna add that lookup column to my form inside of that section that I've already created. So we're gonna choose our appointment main form here. Once your form populates, once again, we created this section here, this one column section for our contact lookup. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the ABC over here on the left hand side to see my table columns and I'm gonna grab that contact lookup and I'm simply gonna drag it into the section where I want it. So I'm gonna drag it over here and drop it into that section. Notice the star here because we made it business required, they're gonna be required to enter this information in the form when they go to create a new appointment. That's all we have to do to set up that form and we're gonna go ahead and click Save and Publish. Once again, we're gonna click the back button with inside the Power App screen, not the browser back button, to go back to our section where our forms are located. I'm just gonna use the breadcrumbs here at the top to select appointment. So the two things that you have to do is you have to select the form and you have to put the information in the form. And if you wanna see that information, you also have to put it in the view as well. So the view is how we're going to see our data. Once again, there's gonna be multiple views available if you use a standard table created by Microsoft. And so we see several different views available. The one that we're gonna be focused on here is the all appointments this public view here. And so we're gonna use this to put our contact lookup in the view. So when you're looking at the data, you're gonna be able to see who the contact is. Just like our form, we have our section over here on the left-hand side for our table columns. And once again, we're just gonna grab that contact lookup column and feel free to put it anywhere you want to. So we're just gonna drag and drop it into the section that we want. So I'm gonna grab this contact lookup and I'm gonna put it right here after the regarding column. Once again, we need to save and publish our view. So we're gonna select save and publish in the upper right hand corner. And we're gonna click the back button. So I'm gonna navigate back to my tables here so we can look at our contact table. So I'm gonna go back to my tables. You can also use the section over here on the left-hand side to navigate back to your tables. This time we're gonna be focusing on the contact table. So I'm gonna select contact. Now currently, I do not have any contacts with inside of this table, which is okay. We're gonna be able to create them here in a second, but let's go take a look at the forms and the views to see what we have available. So I'm gonna select forms. 
All right, and so the form that we're gonna be using here, once again, is the main form. So you can see the name of the table here, contact, and we're gonna be using that main form type. But we also have a quick create as well. So if we're inside of our appointment table and we need to quickly create a contact, we can do that as well. This is pre-designed by Microsoft. But as you build your custom tables, you have the ability to create these types of forms as well. So let's go take a look at what our contact form looks like. So as we look at the contact form, we see that we have the section here for contact information. Once again, these stars mean that it is business required. So we're gonna have to enter this data at minimum. And so we're not gonna have to make any changes here. It has everything that we need and a little bit more. So we're just gonna click the back button. But once again, if you wanna add any of these additional columns, you can just drag and drop them into the form. I'm gonna use the breadcrumbs to navigate back to my contact table. And let's take a look at the views as well. So we see we have a lot of different views available. And so the one that I'm gonna be focused on here is the all contacts so that I can see all of the contacts that are available. All right, so if we wanna add any additional information, this is our all contacts view. So we have the full name, email, company, business, and status as well. If we wanted to add any of these columns on the left-hand side, once again, we can simply just drag and drop them into the view so that we can see them, but no change is necessary at this point. We're gonna click the back button. All right, so we have our tables and our forms and our view set up for our model-driven application. This was the first part just to kind of give you an understanding of what's required as you go to build this model-driven application. In the next video, we're actually going to use these two tables to create a model-driven application. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content. I'll see you in the next one.